Hi, my name is Joseph Mixon and I'm a Principal Consultant at AdviseX. Today I want to talk about VMware vRealize Automation, also called VRA. And to do so, we're going to walk through a manual provisioning process of just a typical VM. So the first thing we're going to need in this provisioning process is going to be a request to know that we have something to provision. In addition to that, we're going to set up some level of approval. Now, in a manual process, this approval and request may be in the same system or could be in disparate systems. In VRA, they will be consolidated in the same system. Once we have a request and it's been approved, we need to build a VM. And to do so, we need a data center. So let's build us a data center. We'll call this guy DC1. And we'll note that this is going to be a vSphere environment. Now, the first request that's going to come into this data center is probably going to be to the networking team to let them know that we need an IP address. Once that goes through, we're also going to need some storage. And you guessed it, we need some CPU and RAM to run this guy. Once all those requests have been completed, we'll have our base VM. But it's almost certain that we're not going to be done yet. Nobody needs just a blank base VM. So let's install an application on top of it. Call this app1. And while we're at it, we're going to add this to Active Directory. And we'll also grant some user access. Chances are the person that's requesting this is going to need to get in and do something with that. Now, while everything's in a great state, it will be really wise to go ahead and take a backup of this VM. And to do so, we're going to put this one in, let's put it in AWS. We'll throw it in Glacier. That way, when the person that we just granted access to breaks things later on, we know we can get it back to a known good state. Now, when you step back and look at each of these individual steps, none of them are really that time consuming or maybe that resource intensive. But what you don't realize is that on a manual process, there's a hidden wait time in between each and every one of these. The first thing that VRA can do to help make this process better is eliminate that wait time and speed things up. It does so by programmatically defining each and every step and any dependency that you have. So for example, the application is not going to be installed until after the VM has been complete, and the backup is not going to take place until everything is in the state that you want it to be in. The second thing VRA can do is bring consistency. Any manual process is going to be prone to error, whether it's typo or maybe someone not following procedure. When you automate provisioning with VRA, you can expect the same results every time. Third up is agility. Now agility can show itself in a lot of different ways. Maybe it's a rollout of a new uh, virtual machine operating system, or maybe you have a new application. We'll put app2 up here. Or maybe we need to provision things to multiple clouds. So let's throw Azure down here in the mix. Since VRA is a cloud management platform, it allows you to dynamically decide where you want to run your workloads for what meets your business needs. The fourth thing that VRA brings to the table is governance and policy. And that's a really big one. You need to be able to control who can access what things, how much of those resources each individual user or user group can consume, and what kind of approvals are set up on top of that. Governance and policy allows you to do that. It also gives you the ability to do dynamic approvals. What I mean by that is, let's say user A requests a VM for 4 gigs. You may want that to be automatically approved, but when that same user requests a VM of 32 gigs, you might want that to trigger a, a, trigger a separate approval. VRA can help accommodate that. The fifth thing VRA brings to the table is a services catalog. All this automation is awesome, but if you can't pre present it to the user in a format that they like, which is going to be an app store-like environment, where they can easily consume these resources, you're not getting the full value out of your automation service. Now, everything that we've looked at so far falls under the umbrella of what's called IaaS, or Infrastructure as a Service. That has to do with any kind of machine or resource provisioning. There's a second half to VRA, and that's called XaaS, or Anything as a Service. Most organizations have some level of automation already built, whether it's PowerShell scripts, maybe there's some Ansible playbooks, or any other number of um, automation technologies. The problem with these is that they're typically only consumable by the person that either wrote them or maybe other administrators in the organization. What VRA can do is it can add a layer of business logic on top of these, allowing you to make these consumable by adding in the governance and the policy that we mentioned earlier, as well as the approvals. 
In addition to that, VRA also has its own orchestration engine called vRealize Orchestrator, also known as VRO. With VRO, you can build custom workflows to automate just about anything you can imagine, including several of the things we've already mentioned, such as backups, user access, Active Directory, networking, and even storage. This has been a small taste of how VRA can help you on your automation journey as you try to make IaaS and XaaS services more consumable to your users. Thanks for watching.